Hey guys, I'm Chris from Lucky Gunner. A few days ago, we released the results from our big epic handgun ammo test where we fired over 100 different self-defense loads into ballistic gelatin. Those results are at Lucky Gunner Labs. You can follow the link above or find it in the video description. We put all the results in these interactive charts so you can easily sort and compare one load to another. Now, there are a lot of different ways to interpret this data, but you don't wanna get so preoccupied with the ballistic performance of the ammo that you forget to take into account a few of the other things that you should probably consider when you're choosing a self-defense load. So to help put all this in context, I wanna talk about some of those other factors. The first thing is reliability. It doesn't matter how effective that ammo is, theoretically, if it doesn't feed well in your gun. People are gonna have different standards for determining reliability, but for me, before I even think about running hollow points through a new pistol, I like to get at least 500 rounds of just everyday full metal jacket practice ammo through it. And if it doesn't choke on any of that stuff, then I'll run maybe 50 to 100 rounds of my self-defense load. That's usually enough for me to be pretty confident that it's gonna work. While I'm doing reliability testing, I'm also checking out the accuracy of the load. Most modern self-defense ammo has pretty good accuracy potential because it's typically made to higher standards than the everyday range ammo, but that doesn't necessarily mean your gun is going to like it. For example, the Glock 43 I've been testing doesn't group very well with 147 grain Federal HST ammo. That load has been really accurate for me in other pistols, but at 25 yards, the Glock was shooting groups five or six inches wider than some of the other loads I tried. So you really have to test that load in your specific gun. On top of accuracy, there's also point of aim. If you're shooting really tiny groups, but they're six inches off of where your sights are aligned, or they're a few inches different than what your practice ammo is, then you got a problem. You can maybe adjust your sights, but then you gotta make sure your self-defense ammo and your practice ammo are kinda hitting to similar point of aim. Recoil is another consideration. It might not be a big deal in a full-size pistol, but in a subcompact, especially a 40 or a 45, the ammo you're using can make a really big difference. There's probably gonna be at least a little more recoil with your carry ammo than your practice ammo, no matter what you're using, but if that difference is so dramatic that you're not able to shoot as well, then it's worth considering a different load. You also have to look beyond how the ammo actually shoots and maybe consider some of the more mundane everyday issues. Like a lot of people will overlook the cost and availability issue. If you found a load that you like, but you can only afford to buy one 20 round box of it, then you should probably keep looking for a different load. You can't buy just enough ammo to stuff into your magazine and call it a day. You have to do that reliability and accuracy testing, and it's also a really good idea to rotate your carry ammo every few months. If you carry the gun every day and it's being exposed to temperature fluctuations and moisture and sweat and dust and your chamber in the same round over and over every day, all that stuff can and has caused guns to fail to work when they come out of the holster in an emergency. So every six months or so, go out to the range, shoot up that ammo that you've been carrying and load up some fresh ammo from the box. That means you probably need to stock up on your favorite hollow point load when you see that it's available. The supply on these premium self-defense loads just is not as consistent as what you see with the everyday full metal jacket ammo. So when we have your preferred load in stock, we might sell out in a couple of days and not see it again for several months. And the same thing is gonna apply with pretty much any other retailer. So get it while you can, or you might be stuck with some choices that you don't like quite as much. If you do find yourself in that boat and you need to make some compromises, I would prioritize reliability over anything else. After that, maybe penetration. And then some of those other issues like the recoil and accuracy and expansion, you can probably afford to make some compromises with that. But that's just my non-expert opinion. Whatever you decide, make sure you test fire that ammo before you carry it and make sure you buy it from luckygunner.com.